College football season starts tonight for Michigan State. What do you think the experts are getting wrong about the Spartans? I, I think that they're um, short selling the possibility they could be. Well, not be. I, I think they're a, a seven win, maybe even eight win team. I, I like what they have with the coaching staff because I think it's calmed things down significantly. This guy is all about low ego and high output. That's his, uh, that's his message. And Jonathan Smith has come in and I think he's done that and put a calm there. And they're, they've, they've added some smart uh, transfers guys that he worked with, obviously at Oregon state, including the quarterback, Aiden Childs. I think the, uh, the center and the tight end have potential to be all big 10 players uh, with Miller and Velling. And I think they have one of the most underrated running backs in the country in Nate Carter. So I, I think they can get some things done there offensively. Defensively, I'm really curious what's going to be there. But they've got a lot of guys that have been there for a while. And and they're they're decent players. So I, I just think the coaching change alone is going to be good enough. When you look at Michigan State's schedule, there's a, a bit of a gauntlet in the middle of that schedule when they have to take on you know the likes of um, – you know, it's a, it's it starts at Boston College, then it's home against Ohio State, at Oregon, home against Iowa, and at Michigan. That's a tough five game stretch, but the other seven games on the schedule are quite winnable. Are they going to win all seven games out of those? Probably not. But I don't know if they're going to lose all five of those tough games in the gauntlet either. So I, I'd like Michigan State to win more than five games. I think it's a seven or eight win team. I think you're right about Nate Carter. Um, you know, this guy is. He's hard to bring down. And he's slippery. So I would agree with that. Um, from Michigan, I think two things. I went into the offseason with – I thought they had perhaps grave concerns along the offensive line. I feel much better about the offensive line as we get closer to the season. Miles Hinton has got a lot of playing experience at both Stanford and Michigan. Um, transferred over, played some last year. Uh, he's at left tackle. You got Josh Preeb. Uh, who had all Big Ten honors at Northwestern, getting him is probably a big deal. And the right tackle, Gio Ahadi, just relying on Jansen. I mean, he's had a football crush on him forever. So I'm going to go. I I think think it's standard when you lose as much talent as they did up front for people to expect it to be a drop-off, and it probably won't be as good as it was. I feel feel better about it now than I did going into the offseason. Uh, I think Michigan's defense is elite and that elite defense can win you half the games right there. And you go beyond that. I do think people are sleeping on the offensive talent they have there. Diamond Edwards, have we forgotten that he's, he's he can be quite good. Uh, the tight end Colston Loveland might be the best tight end in the country. And you've got a quarterback um, combination there with, with all the quarterbacks there that, that, that can run the ball if they have to. And, uh, if the offensive line, as you say, is better, people are. I've heard a lot of people say nine wins for Michigan. Uh, some people say less, and I'm stunned by that. I think this is a team that really they get. They also don't have to play Penn State this year. I think that Michigan's got potential to be a lot better than people think. So, and the other thing is, I'll just say this: I think there's this this belief that they've got a running quarterback and a passing quarterback. The passing quarterback can run. He might Davis not be Warren. as good a run. Davis Warren, he's don't don't sleep on him in the run game too. Um, depends who, where the snaps go and all that. But is he kind of like a JJ McCarthy in that respect? I mean, people were expecting McCarthy to take off and go, but can he run as I well don't, as McCarthy? I don't want to do that because it's so. Like I, I think it's unfair to, you know, compare anyone to JJ who had incredible success. But if you if you're looking for a comp and you say he's a poor man's JJ. It might be one way to put it. An amazing story. Like his junior year, he comes down with leukemia, barely plays, yeah. does fight and get back onto the field. And senior year wiped out by COVID. So basically you got this guy who was considered a quarterback prospect, was dealt a bad hand, overcomes it, and then loses his COVID year and decides, gets sends tape around, Harbaugh returns his call, and he comes in in J.J.'s class as a walk-on quarterback. Now when you're – when you're coming in in J.J.'s class and they already had an established relatively young quarterback who's still playing, by the way, in Cade McNamara at Iowa. Um, I don't know if that's if that's like a sign of his confidence or what or how to even put it, but, um, you know, he's overcome all that. And we'll see. We'll see what the what happens at the quarterback spot tomorrow night. But 
248-539-9797. What have the experts gotten wrong about your college team, Michigan and Michigan State?